excited to have this panel discussions to share our view as industry leaders and also answer for the questions you have on this topic. So how many of you have an enterprise data center in Bangalore? You can raise your hand. And how many of you are into hybrid setup? Great. Great to see a few hands. So as a panel moderator, I'll be guiding through this process. So we have uh, 45 minutes. So we'll be breaking this to four sections. Uh, uh, we want to hear overall your opinion. So we will start with that. Then I will introduce our panelists to you and present few questions for the panelists. And we will conclude the discussions with the final remark from our panelists and come back to you for question and answer, right? So let's dive uh, straight into our first questions of our panelists and the audience, right? So please turn to the person on your right and share the first word coming to your mind when you are thinking future role of enterprise data center. So you have 15 seconds. I request panelists to hold your words with you. I'll be requesting to share that word when I introduce you to the audience. So you can share the word. Uh, and do you want to shout out what word come to your mind when you're thinking or hearing future role of enterprise data center? Any words? AI? Sustainability. Sustainability. What else? Cloud? OK, DC is on cloud. Thank you. So it's my uh, pleasure to introduce our wonderful panelist. So start with uh, Chandra. Chandra has over 15 years of experience in software development, IT operations, and technical program management. Currently with Visa in Bangalore, he manages engineering programs and data and AI platform. In his free time, he enjoys playing with his six-year-old child and playing badminton when possible. Chandra, do you want to share the word and why did you choose that word? Sure, thank you, uh, Hari. So what is comes first word, right? So we always know that there's always either pass or fail. My word is pass, but I'll put another A into that. That becomes P double A double S. P means is any data center is a cloud hybrid or any word. P stands for performance of the data center. Then A is in availability of the data center. Another A goes to automation and then scalability and security of the data center. So I guess these uh, you know, uh, 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 components is a very essential for any data center, either you say hybrid, cloud, or on-prem. Thank you. So thank you, Chandra, being a great, coming with a creative word. So next, Dina. Dina has spent 27 years in retail and consumer packaged goods industry, currently serving as global head of digital operations and cloud transformations and the India Center uh, Head for Kimberly Clark. Recently, Dina successfully led the migrations from SAP ECC to S S4HANA uh, for the, uh, North America. Outside in IT, Dina enjoy playing cricket and watching movie. Dina, do you want to share the word which you have chosen and why did you choose that word? Yeah, you, Chandra, you put a new acronym, PWAWS, very nice. I will start using it. <laughs> okay, but, uh, but whenever I see a data center, I always think about it's the heart and brain of the company, right? Everything, whatever company want to do, whatever it is like. So I always connect data centers, our heart and brain. That's how it, I, I look at. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. So next, my pleasure to introduce Mankesh. Uh, Mankesh serves as Chief Technology Officer at Ujjiv and Small Finance Bank, bringing 27 years of expertise in strategic IT and digital innovation. Previously, he has Chief Information Security Officer at National Stock Exchange Clearing Limited when he led cyber and information security programs. His career includes significant roles at Union Bank of India, Oriental Bank of Commerce, State Bank of India, and Rolta India Limited. So thank you, Mankesh. Do you want to share the word which you have chosen and why did you choose the word? Data center is al uh, always be a very critical part of uh, each city. So my crash, crash is my word basically. The data center should be cost effective. See, for it is a cost effective, or for re reliable, it should be a reliable, and then uh, scalable, like uh, our colleagues told, and then it should be available 24 by 7, because we are working in a very regulated entity, and uh, any downtime 
or any non availability it will create a reputation loss as well as uh, nowadays regular uh, regulatory is also viewing very seriously so these are the basic uh, three four pillars for uh, having a data center yeah. thanks thanks mankesh uh, money uh, introduce money money is the director of platform engineering at ola with over 15 years of experience across tech industry, including roles at Walmart, FireEye, Intel, and Thomson Reuters, Money is a visionary tech leader specialized in cost optimization and platform building for diverse business needs. His education background includes Master of Science from USA and Executive MBA from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, blinding both technical and manager expertise. Money, do you want to share the words and why sure. did you choose the word? Uh, good morning, everyone. So the first word which comes to my mind uh, when it uh, would say cloud cost optimization. So it all, I mean, uh, come from a different perspective. Uh, say for example, it all boils down to your uh, balance sheet or PNL statement. So as long as uh, we are able to incorporate the public cloud or private cloud data center into, uh, I mean, the break even point, that's where the enterprise uh, data center kicks in. So. Uh, one word I would say, cloud cost optimization or infrastructure optimization. Thank because you, earlier uh, we used to have a trend where uh, people were migrating from private cloud to public cloud, and now there is a shift again because of the expense going into private cloud. So, thanks, it. thanks, Moni. Yeah, cost optimization and infrastructure optimizations always key priority because that's, that's connected with the profit and loss of the company, right? Thanks, Moni. Sure. So Dr. Saumin so was a head of analytics at Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages, bringing over two decades of experience. Throughout his career, he has held various roles at esteemed organizations such as EY, TCS, Genpact, and Manthan Systems. So Dr. Saumin, do you want to share the word? Yeah. So I think everybody took the word, so last words remaining is speed, which I realized uh, whenever I was working in the on-prem system, what used to happen that whenever you want to run any algorithm on data, the usability of data has increased significantly on the cloud, cloud because we can boost the speed like anything and we can run any algorithm today. Previously, it was struggling environment. Thanks. Thank you, Saman. So start with uh, Mani. What are the current trends you are observing in the deployment and utilization of on-prem data center in your organization? Uh, okay, I'll probably give a little history around that. Uh, say, for example, now the trend is we will keep our workload cloud agnostic. Uh, so as long as, say, cloud native, to be frank, it should be independent of the cloud provider, whether I'm powering it up using AWS or Azure or GCP or using my own private cloud, say, using OpenStack uh, or whatever medium it is, as long as I keep it cloud agnostic, uh, that's, that's the way forward. So whoever is going to give me a better dollar value, that's how it's going to be. So uh, as long as I keep it cloud agnostic, that's the way forward, I would say. Yes. So no yeah. yeah, so Mankesh, you want to add into that? See, uh, like I mentioned in my introduction, uh, so basically, I am from a bank and you know, uh, there is a lot of critical uh, data is there and uh, so many applications, we have uh, some legacy application, some, are, some may not be cloud native. So as such, uh, our primary focus is to have an on-premises uh, data, uh, data center. So we are having a mix basically and since we are a tech savvy bank and we adopt new technologies also, so we have certain applications which are hosted on cloud, either it is a public cloud or we have a private cloud within the bank also, as well as we have taken services from one of the cloud service provider. But then uh, the applications are limited because most of the data, uh, which is a customer related data, PI data is available. So there is a regulatory guidelines also and then uh, basically core banking and other critical systems that is uh, there in the data center. And then if you go with the cloud, then first of all, whether we have to see whether that application will give a cost benefit analysis because the application should support microservice based architecture or uh, uh, this cloud native architecture. And 
See, cloud uh, main advantage is only flexibility nowadays. Cost is a debatable, debatable actually. Cost earlier it was uh, myth that uh, cloud uh, this thing uh, cloud is a uh, cheap, cheaper uh, this thing. But if you go cloud, uh, go to the cloud, then you will come to know cloud is not that cheaper basically. If you don't use effectively, it will be a costly affair. So, but then uh, uh, we have to use the benefits of uh, clouds also. So we have a, a few applications like uh, which is not uh, uh, you can say critical or uh, it, it is not storing data, some kind of EOT environment or like we have a digital saving account, digital FD account. So those kind of applications we have hosted on uh, cloud and remaining applications basically we are uh, doing the assessment which are the applications uh, can go to the cloud and we can uh, take the benefit of cloud. One more thing actually cloud, uh, there is a latency kind of uh, one uh, challenge basically. If you host all applications on premises, you will not face the issue of latency because there are certain applications like UPI, there, there is a, we have to uh, send the response within uh, certain seconds, like 30 seconds, we have to send the response, end to end response should go to the uh, NPCA and to the other banks. So those kind of critical uh, applications are there that we cannot host that. We may use certain uh, services from cloud, but many applications at present in banking uh, sector, they are on-premises. Uh. Okay. So what I'm hearing from Mani and Mankesh is a lot about cloud and also talking about the data security, the hybrid setup, right? In, in that, how the current trends such as cloud adoption and hybrid, it I it affecting the role of enterprise on-prem data center. Chandra, do you want to start with that and then Dina, you can add? Uh, interesting question, I would say that. Uh, so there are cloud, there are hybrid, there are uh, on-prem as well. When you look at the aspect of all these you know, options, uh, one thing is very common and very thing evident as well that either, either of the you know, uh, part you choose, if you're choosing on-prem, just, just an example, that means as well that you need a set, you know, a kind of set of capabilities within in your house, right? And you, at the same time, don't want to be left behind the flexibility you talked about within the cloud, right? Or any new feature enhancement which is coming very frequently into the cloud area. You don't want to be left behind as well. So you need a set of new capabilities within your house to make that possible as well. If you're choosing cloud per se, that means that cost is a real, real factor on that, right? So probably, uh, uh, it depends upon how you structure your whole infrastructure, which what uh, load has to go into the cloud, what loads you are still you know, thinking to you know, keep it in the on-prem. So it depends upon how you're defining those aspects. And that's, if you look at all you know, hybrid uh, as well, if you're, you're just you know, or, you know, changing your load uh, on-prem or the cloud, the capability you build within house is totally different. So if it is on-prem, lots set of capabilities or resource or skill set do you need. When you go to the cloud, do you still need a set of capabilities and a skill set which is very, very different from what you have today when you have the on-prem, right? So you, the on a capability was a lot of things are changing and all the organizations are looking, take, you know, taking care of it other than aspects of cost, you know, flexibility and other and so on. Thanks, uh, Chandra. Dina, do you want to add something into that? Yeah, it's a very interesting topic. It's always debatable, right? It's, uh, from my perspective, it all starts from, as a CTO's, right? Build or buy. So a lot of options are available nowadays, like buy, right? If based on the decision, like if build or buy, your cloud adoption also will increase. Today, a lot of options, like earlier, if you go 20 years back, 15 years back, is a core single ERP. Everything is around the same. Now slowly we are moving to connected ERP, right? Hybrid ERP. So in that scenario, cloud adoption has always been beneficial and also buy gets a lot of advantage. So uh, in, in the scenario, like uh, the data center, what has to kept in data center, what has to kept in cloud based on the application what we are buying or building it. If it is building, we can always look at in-house. If it is buying, it's always options are available from the cloud. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Mani. So, so we are talking about the build or buy concept, right? It's based on the need. We, we decide which way we want to go. Uh, and keeping the, the cloud 
is a buzzword everywhere, right? And some industries or organizations continue invest in on-prem data center. Do you want to put some insight on that, Mani? So, yeah, uh, I will start off with my current company. So, uh, especially with the, say, private data center, it's, an, again, an expensive affair, right? Uh, so, you need to <coughs> um, uh, do a colo, uh, I mean, basically rent a space in the data Hello. center. Okay, you basically need to rent a space in data center and rack and stack all your servers. And the maintenance, it's, it's a maintenance nightmare. So, being said so, uh, I would say uh, we are supposed to consider when is the break-even point. Uh, I mean, just to zoom it out, right, I will probably throw a couple of data points over here. So uh, overall, the data center market is around 300 billion, and India stands roughly, what, 3% of it, like 5, 6 billion, uh, with all c controllers and, and Equinix and, and CP, all these big players pouring in. And uh, with respect to um, the megawatt, the velocity or the capacity of the data center is around like uh, hun uh, 1,000 megawatts. And we are set to grow in like multiple folds. At least in two to three years, we are supposed to touch like uh, uh, 2K megawatt worth of capacity of data center. And this is being powered by, uh, I mean, even government supports it, I would say. So uh, they are supporting it by do I mean trying to enforce data localization and of course uh, digitalization. So those are all the major drives. Being said, so uh, as I said, it's an expensive affair. Uh, so as long as you have a, I mean a big balance sheet and there is a lot of cost which is going into uh, your infrastructure cost, especially the crowd infrastructure cost, that's when a company takes a step back and start to decide okay, should I be investing uh, in my uh, private data center? At least the predictable loads. So, of course, there are a lot of tra trade-offs uh, being said. So, so, in terms of there is stateless, a stateless workload, there is stateful, uh, there is data workload. Which workload can I move to begin with? And that's the journey where uh, people start off with it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, at least we should be start doing it in a paperwork. And then if it's all viable, then we sh should consider slowly starting investing because as long as we keep our, keep our workload cloud agnostic, it's, it's pretty much doable. And we will see a lot of, of uh, I mean, it, there's a couple of things I would say. So one is like the cloud infrastructure cost and as well as the resource or the associates which you have to deploy in order to power this, this is also vital. But uh, even with our current, say, big uh, vendors like AWS and whatnot, they also have this hybrid capability or uh, bringing, into, bringing in your own cloud, say there is AWS Outpost, which actually does, uh, I mean, does the magic for you. I mean, you don't have to uh, rely on your open stack or your engineers have to be like trained on it. So all that can be uh, negated as long as, I mean, it's, it's a wise decision, I would say, as long as your company is able to accommodate it. Yeah. And uh, what I'm hearing when I, even in previous also you mentioned about cloud agnostic, right? And also, Mangesh, you mentioned about cloud, cloud native and also the low latency, right? So do you want anything more on that, Mangesh? Oh. See, it's a uh, mixed uh, approach, basically. See, these new uh, companies or new fintechs, basically fintechs, they, their applications, actually, they are uh, cloud native. They are cloud, we call them as a cloud-born uh, companies, fintechs. So all their applications, uh, they are running on a uh, cloud only. So sometimes you don't have choice uh, but to go with uh, cloud. So there are uh, certain uh, applications. So we have to go with them, uh, with their uh, architecture kind of thing. We use a lot of uh, SaaS applications also, like uh, Office 365 is one of the best example, almost. Uh, mo most of the uh, organizations uh, use. Uh, so our concern is only uh, is that data should be uh, it means data center should be in India or uh, they should have a proper DR uh, and uh, uh, then uh, VAPT kind of thing. Uh, VAPT also, that is one of the uh, concern basically when you go with a SaaS kind of applications. So we have to get the certification from uh, them that it is a vulnerability, uh, that, uh, that application is not having any vulnerability because we cannot do uh, their uh, 
वी ए पी टी वी ए वी ए एटलीस्ट पी टी वी कैन डू बट वी ए वी ए वी कैनॉट डू बट वी हैव टू रिलाई ऑन दैट सो वी डू यूज सैस एप्लीकेशन लाइक एच आर एम एस इज देयर वी हैव सी आर एम एप्लीकेशन इज ऑन प्री मैसेज बट दैट बेस्ड ऑन द नेचर ऑफ द एप्लीकेशन एंड द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द बैंक वी गो विथ क्लाउड बट मोस्टली इट इज ऑन ऑन प्री मैसेज कैंड ऑफ थिंग एंड बिकॉज see now uh, earlier uh, now nowadays customer is invisible now we are going with the invisible banking so now this cloud is also that way if you see it is a uh, uh, invisible so anything now anything which is visible or anything we can uh, let us say go and see where is our data center sometimes that also gives some com- comfort basically so our uh, strategy is that only we we are open with open for uh, cloud applications but uh, majority applications we go with uh, uh, our uh, t- this data center partners and nowadays data center technology also they have come up with lot of uh, new initiatives uh, basically like this liquid cooling or green data centers and lot of spaces are also there because by virtue of uh, this uh, cloud basically all these uh, cloud service for google and uh, amazon and uh, microsoft they have built their uh, they means they have not built but somebody built for them so a lot of space is also there uh, in uh, cloud so we can get easily the data center uh, place it is a costing kind of thing so we have that kind of approach adopted in our bank so thanks thanks mangesh so what i'm hearing is like invisible customers in cloud you you can't see the data center right but in real on prem data center you can go and feel and see how does your where your data stays, right? So we are talking about data, so Mankesh, uh, sorry, uh, so Saumen as a data perspective, do you want to add any insight on that about on continue investing in on-prem data center? I think one is uh, everybody is mentioning, which is correct, that uh, comfort. So on-prem data center gives you the comfort and uh, Sometimes it's the accessibility. So whenever I use the cloud data center, sometimes it's happened that we have to uh, cross many gate. So many OTPs and anything, almost that your mobile is full with the OTPs. And on-prem data center, whenever you used to have, then you, you didn't have that kind of challenges. So one is that uh, accessibility is there for the larger uh, data and algorithm and how to use the data that is there for cloud but on prem data center also gives you the comfort to use the data by your own very easily uh, and with your own own way so that's the difference i see always the, the pros and cons of both okay so so we are talking about emerging technology and data and ai and right it, if you're not talking about ai with with data center uh, it'll be no brainer right so how will the role of enterprise altered by emerging trends like ai and digital technology edge advance in connectivity and security chandra do you want to add yeah particularly on ai obviously it is buzzword for today and uh, ai is not just started it is uh, you know a decade away from today as well but starting from the gna maybe uh, two and a half years now it is, is a, literally a buzzword for each and everywhere right when we adopting ai that as well means there are some you know um, llms running behind it and that as well means that a lot of lot of data being processed right and that will as well means that uh, all those data has to be secured and privacy to be maintained right so in these aspects when you look at uh, overall picture and you then you decide which part of you know which particular type of the uh, data center you'd like to go ahead there would be on prem cloud uh, and so on and so forth what i see is that you need to particularly define um, what is your need as an organization what is the, the most important for you at the same time you are looking forward to adopt ai as well as you want to secure your data you make sure your you know data is privacy is maintained as well right so depend upon these we need to go ahead so certainly we want a flexibility we want to go ahead with the newer technologies we want to adopt we want to put some intelligence behind that so that we can adopt new things but at the same time we need to make sure that our data is being secured yeah so so thanks chandra so 
what I'm hearing is, so we should keep data and security and privacy in mind when you invest in this uh, AI technologies, right? So Mani, do you want to add something yeah, to that? I'll probably add uh, uh, to it. So when it comes to AI, right, what it means to data center? So data center, it's, it's I mean, uh, at the back end, right, it's all about compute and storage. It's like a bunch of servers are running and the compute, and there is a backbone, I mean, uh, the switches and routers and whatnot. Uh, being said so, for AI, it's there will be a differentiation in it. I mean, in terms of how uh, how it's going to compute. Basically, that's where the GPUs are all there, right? Being said, so, uh, even uh, NVIDIA, right, who became the biggest company just because of that, because they were able to produce these AI power. I mean, the chips which are which can power the AI for the for the entire world. And of course, it's an expensive process. So, and again, uh, throwing in a couple of data points over here. So, uh, India, uh, we have a lot of I mean, millions and billions of uh, users generating a lot of data. So, it's around 20% of world's data has been generated by us. Uh, but when it uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, data center, it's only 3%. So, we are actually shipping this 20% of data across the globe most likely US and, and UK and, and other data centers. So if we are in India, uh, ideally it will be shipped to Singapore, most likely. Uh, just now, I mean, say for example, AWS started off with like Chennai data center, Hyderabad and, and Mumbai and whatnot. But 90% of the time, uh, we still ship it to Singapore until unless the data localization kicked in and then there is a necessity for us to even compute and especially store the data in house. I mean, in house in a sense, within India. So uh, uh, I would say moving forward with AI kicking in, uh, say even if I fire a query using Jad, GPT, or, or Gemini, it's, it's actually the data goes across. It's being powered back, and, and, then, and then it comes to us. So uh, there, will be a, there should be a drift. Uh, uh, to be frank, even Ola as a company, we are also trying to tap on using that vertical integration. Uh, vertical integration, what I mean is starting from the silicon, designing of the chip, of the AI chip, and then slowly into the cloud business, and then offering it as a service, uh, probably for at least GPU as a service, and then slowly into the general compute. So uh, that's the industry trend, trend I would say. Yeah, that, that's an interesting perspective, right? Like, we have 20% data we generate, and we have only 3% data, data centers, right? And also the previous panel discussion talk about how the data center is growing, doubling every year, and good to see that, and also the, the few government initiatives, right? In, in continue talking about AI and emerging trend. Um, so, Saumin, do you want to add something on that? Yeah, I think uh, AI is now emerging trend, and everybody started using AI. But uh, one thing is still spending that, uh, how to extract the value from AI how to impact the business by using AI is still derived. Uh, it's more like not a data crunching or algorithm. It is that lots of business understanding needs to be there to run the model, extract the information, and make it useful for your uh, business. And that is still derived, still needs to be derived. We are working on that. Everybody is trying to do that, but still it has to be far-faced. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Tina, uh, you want to add something yeah. into that? See, is again, like a buzzword everybody talked about. Uh, if we talk about on-prem cloud, uh, on-prem data center or a cloud data center, at least in Kimberly Clark, we use both. But for more of a data crunching and try to get sources from multiple, as a CPG company, we don't have the first party data. We buy the data from third party. So always it's helpful to do on a cloud because the architecture is readily available and a lot of uh, past services available. So we can do, provide, and try to give a data back to the business. And that is the uh, key thing, whether where to first of all store the data. Yes, as you rightly said, some data we are generating, why to put it in the cloud? But uh, whereas some companies where, like us, we don't have direct data. We need to source from the third party. Those things are there. That is on the marketing and sales data. Whereas on the other side, on the manufacturing and production, those things, we have in-house data, which can be done in our on-prem data center. So it's like combination of both uh, on-prem as well as cloud, we can get in, and, and it, 
finally how we generate the value to the business that's more key than yes tick mark is not important right so the lot of today gen ai again everybody want to get in follow that and try to follow implement that but is it a business value available then look at that there are something uh, copilot is coming those things we can use which is ready of service we can start adopting but on the ai perspective we need to see a value and try to implement that's my take so thanks uh, so yes us like dina mentioned right what value we adding is it on prem or is a cloud right if you're talking about on prem and uh, cloud and cost is always a point coming up right so keeping that how do the cost consideration of maintaining on prem data center compared to utilizing cloud services what innovations are currently being developed to enhance the capability and efficiency of on prem data center when you want to start with that sure definitely so uh, when it comes to data center innovation right again i want to break that into like multiple foods uh, say starting from compute and storage so on compute side uh, there is i mean when we uh, when we just uh, look back a decade ago uh, the compute has so uh, the compute has increased multiple folds so earlier we used to have like say uh, bunch of say uh, 16 core or 32 cores now it's like going in like 100 plus and and what not and there are gpus as well uh, being said so um, there are i mean with respect to the innovation on those front there are gpus of course uh, which is powering uh, the um, ai market and on top of it there is quantum computing there is uh, ai chips and uh, when it comes to st storage again there is like ephemeral disk uh, and we could see a lot of adoption especially being done for the data side of it i mean uh, the storage part of it the data platform uh, especially the distributed system using the ephemeral disk because it, it can do to be, i mean a, a multiple folds of iops uh, and your latency improves and and what not and when it comes to the data center again uh, the lot of power i mean the electricity gets wasted on two things uh, one is on on powering the machines itself say 40% of it goes on it and another 40% goes into the cooling part so uh, the liquid immersion is is still an emerging one because it's not just the uh, chip i mean the motherboard and the chip and the entire unit has to be sort of been immersed uh, being said so uh, there are like two variations of of cooling technology which is currently in the market one is of course the cooling of the air and as well as using a lot of water uh, so there was an article as well very recently in economic times uh, typically addressing this specific requirement because uh, most of our data center uh, needs a lot of water to be uh, to be frank which has to be circulated and being said so uh, at a nationwide right i mean we are we aren't doing that great or, or the natural resources especially when it comes to water uh, it's it's again a question mark so a lot of these uh, problem statement as sort of needs to be addressed by government as well. I mean, with an extra push. So yeah, that would be my take. So there are like a lot of emerging technologies starting from, uh, I mean, on the cooling side and as well as on the computing front. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's going to take its own time and, and shape to adopt. And whoever going to uh, uh, get a hands on it with a solid, say, Nvidia, uh, for example, uh, they, they're going to go break. Thanks, thanks, Mani. Dina, do you want to add something into that? Yeah, so innovation, we talked about a computer and storage, how we are trying to optimize. I'm looking at the building itself, right? If you look at like the technologies, what we can take non conservative energies, uh, green hydrogen, these are the various initiatives that are coming now to generate power without using conservative technologies. So, uh, while a lot of engineering thing happening inside the data center, I always look right outside data center, what are things are happening, how do we get that optimized. So that way, like, uh, there are a lot of, like, future, the topic is the future of data center. Future data center is going to exist. There's nothing like, we'll, or everything, even cloud, 100% adoption, there's no 100%. We need to have both. But on that side, if you look at, if you have on-prem data center, look at alternate technologies, how do we get a power, uh, better power source, alternate power source, those things could be one. Uh, green hydrogen is something like, you know, for example, Reliance as a group, they are trying to do it with a lot of JVs. 
uh, you still are in our side, in our one of the data center, what we have in UK, we are trying to get that cooling itself and the everything we are trying to do, green nitrogen. It's on a uh, very, very pilot stage, but we try to look at it. It's very, very costly to uh, generate one kg of green nitrogen is very, very costlier than the regular power, but over a period of time that could be. So I'm looking at outside, but yeah, what you talked about, more and more happening on the internal side, uh, the GPUs are getting optimized, a uh, better way of uh, data churning out, those things are very, very interesting. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Dina and Mani. So we are nearing end of our time together. Uh, if there is one key takeaway you would like our audience to remember for, from this session, what would it be? And you can uh, share separate key takeaways. So start with Chandra in, in one sentence. So probably I would say that either part of you choose on-prem, cloud, or uh, hybrid cloud. I would say that, you're, as we keep saying, is our compute and store as key most important part of it. So be cloud ready. That means that well, you start using your compute and storage separately so that uh, it, it utilizes into the on-prem well if it is choosing the on-prem. If you're utilizing and you know going forward for uh, cloud, you are very ready to go for the cloud. So I would say that be cloud ready. So, uh, yes, I think I just concurred your thought uh, that lots of uh, capability and other thing needs to be built up. We are trying to do that and hope we'll be there very soon. Thank you. Mankesh? Actually, my submission is uh, we should have a balanced approach, basically. Uh, so, we can use cloud with... Uh, <coughs> with because uh, one more... Uh, key player is there in each organization, CISO. So normally <laughs> that factor also we have to see whether they are permitting it. But uh, it is uh, good to go with cloud for non-critical and uh, cloud native applications so that we can get the uh, benefits also. But then even uh, on-premises also a lot of uh, good players are there in the market and uh, India is like uh, progressing. We have a lot of good data centers where we can get similar kind of uh, services which we are getting from the cloud. And it depends on uh, organizations, uh, risk appetite and uh, basically budget. If budget permits, we should go with uh, uh, on-premises. If you have more budget also, then uh, for private, uh, sorry, public cloud. Because uh, like I told, uh, it is, we have to see that cost factor also, it matters. If you don't use effectively, it will be a very uh, uh, cost, uh, basically it will incur a lot of cost. So we have to take a balanced approach and uh, accordingly we should choose where, which applications should be hosted on cloud, which application should be hosted on premises. Yep. Thanks, Mangesh, Dina and then Yeah, Mangesh. so you talked about cost, but one thing I would like to pass on what, uh, so we are all IT has been, we are all, most of IT leaders are here. We all still looked at as a cost center, right? How do we move away from cost center to a profit center? Look at a cost benefit analysis, okay? At the end of the day, whatever you do, whether you want to keep on-prem or a cloud, do a cost benefit analysis. Even if you move to cloud, apply FinOps, all those things. Otherwise, that you will start paying more. It may look lucrative to start with, but we'll end up paying more. So apply FinOps, tag everything, make accountable of respective owners, and start them paying to you so that you will become a profit center. This is one small tip I'm trying to give you. Apply FinOps if you are in a cloud, then you start charging back to the business and start revenue, uh, start making revenue to revenue and show, start uh, showing revenue in your own organization. You can showcase as your profit center as well. Money. Sure. Uh, so I would put it in one word, have a vision. Uh, so just, there is a phrase, right? I mean, what gets measured uh, gets optimized. So uh, start knowing your data points in terms of uh, from your organization, where do you guys stand? And uh, moving forward, say, for example, next three years or five years, because it's, it's, it's a journey, I mean, cloud adoption or enterprise, uh, I mean, moving your enterprise workload to your own private cloud, it's a journey. So it's, it's not a one-day job or, or a one-month job. It's going to uh, at least take a year, to be frank. So be prepared for it and do your, at least start off with your paper exercise and, and that will go in places. I mean, you will, the numbers will reflect back to you. So you don't, there's no magic. Yeah. So thanks, thanks everybody. Give them a applause.
So I will close this session by saying on-prem data center will work alongside cloud service to create flexible hybrid solutions. They are essential for managing sensitive data, ensuring security and compliance, and also optimizing cost for specific workload. By modernizing with AI and automation, they will meet evolving business needs, enhancing efficiency and supporting applications that require low latency and high performance. So thank you everybody for being here. Thank you W Media, event sponsors, AV crew, wonderful MC, and also all the speakers and my wonderful panelists, Chandra, Saumen, Mankesh, Dina, and Mani for wonderful, uh, for all the insights. Thank you. So we'll open up for the questions. Hi. Uh, uh, we are talking about uh, new data center and then share it with several users. One of the first session was that, where we said we'll have a data center park and then uh, have several users and things. Then we also discussed cyber security. I'm from Defense Department, so we only have on-prem, because we want to save our data, we don't want to go to the cloud. Where is the role for uh, on-prem data centers when you are discussing sharing the uh, big data centers, big data centers, like we had at Tulip earlier, which was closed, of course. So the role of uh, on-prem should be specified, specific to certain departments where they want to keep their data safe. So security is not a problem. Maintenance and skill development uh, within the group, within the department is a, is a must, which is going to be uh, you know, uh, troublesome and also cost, uh, uh, cost is going to go up. Whereas if I use a shared data center, for example, I have 10 labs in uh, Bangalore, and instead of having one uh, you know, silo, separate, silo, separate uh, data centers in each lab, I will have one data center and share it, where that means cloud becomes mandatory. So public cloud is a uh, mandatory requirement. It may not be costly. So, so thank, thank you for the question. That's a different perspective. Uh, Dina, do you want to add or respond to that? Yeah. So uh, at least none of the panelists are in the crowd. Nobody says cloud is not required. It, cloud is inevitable. The question is, are we going to continue it on-prem or not? On-prem doesn't mean you need to have your own data center and do all four walls and uh, ceiling is owned by you. Co-location servers, like what you talked about, is also a on-prem data center. So you, so a lot of service providers are available. You can try to do it. You can spread across your load in multiple so that you can safely do it. That's what. So there's no doubt about cloud adoption will happen or not. Cloud is going to be there. We will, there's no one can uh, skip that. But on-prem will also continue. That's my take. On-prem doesn't mean it's your own uh, building, it can be a co-location as well. Co-location yeah. from DCDR uh, from different uh, partners. Should not go with the same partner for DC and DR in co-location case. Yep. So we'll close this discussion. So we have panelists around. In break time, you can connect. So thank you for uh, being a wonderful audience. <laughs>